they have to say in point of view. You'll doubt all that he said. Yeah, he answered every prayer, and he'll always be there. Everything discussed on this show originated as public information. Commentary is given about what has been said or done by you. You did it. If you don't want to be this discussed, then don't do it at all. You better make sure that it don't get public. Because once it get public and I see it, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about it on my darn show. All right. See y'all later. Bye. <laughs> are locked into Larry Reed Live, and tonight we're going to hear from the horse's mouth. Because there are a whole lot of things that have been happening in the black Christian world. So this is what I need for you guys to do. What I need for you to do, I need for you to go ahead and tell the person that always want to know what's happening on the show that we are on right darn now. So click that share link and let everybody know that we are on. Tonight we have Bishop George Bloomer sitting right here. How you doing? Doing fine. It's the skinny version, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's going to get me a little later on. And then right here is <laughs> Bishop Bernard, Master Prophet. What is, why get some in the title? Because there's so much of me to go around. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> My mentor is sitting beside me tonight. I'm so glad that both of you guys are here. It's a the, miracle. Let me say, these are two, no lie, and I'm not saying this because they are here. But I've been there to the prophetic college. These are two of the smartest, most enlightened people that I know. No lie. No lie. Wow. I'm not just saying that. Yeah, and I came here tonight to enlighten you on why I'm here. <laughs> okay, what's that? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> and the only reason why I don't bust you in your face <laughs> is because we're on live uh, 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 TV and... Uh, talking about I need to get here with my skinny version of George. You better watch your mouth. Well, you know, but let me just say this. It's all out of love. Yeah. Man, when it comes to our <laughs> spiritual history, and if, especially those of us from North Carolina, which is where your roots are at, <laughs> spirit, spiritual authority, casting out demons, warfare, witchcraft, and the pews. Man, you've done it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes to 
any joke, anything that I'm doing, of course, I'm, trying to make, I'm, I'm not trying to make people laugh. Let me make sure people have a good time. You know, but that's all that is. There's your way of exercising demons. If, I, I, if you laugh, you get sickness out of you. You get stress out of you. You get a lot of stuff out of you. So I, I, I agree with that. See, y'all y'all see that now? That, that yeah. fast. That fast. Yeah. Well, you know, the first time he talked about me was about with Lady Paula Brown. He says, why don't that Bernard Jordan <laughs> go buy her a house? <laughs> <laughs> he has all that money. Him and Deborah. And I said, I haven't even met this guy. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you can do it out of your inheritance. Let me tell you, you know what. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell this man, Billy, but Bishop Bernard Jordan is, is a very frugal man, and as a result, he will always have some money. So if Lady Brown still ain't got her house because Deborah Crow and them ain't doing what they need to do, I don't put this on them. This is my show. If she ain't doing what she, please, just we, we're hoping that tonight Zoe Ministries and Bernard Jordan will go ahead and buy her a $5 million house out there pay the cash. <laughs> My God. My okay, God. all right. So there are a few things <laughs> that has happened in black Christianity. The main thing is that Benny Hinn has made a statement, and the statement that he made, and I posted it, it went viral. Every time I post concerning it, it goes viral. The $1,000 seed. That was the main thing that stood out to me. And then also the teaching of prosperity. And then your video came out about it. Me and you talked about it. So tonight, I really want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And then another thing that happened prior to that, Nita gets on the internet, tells all of us a lie. Well, I'm just going to be a, a lie. Her assistant told her that this man went in there and seen her prophetic panties and her Baptist bra. And because <laughs> she's seen it, because he's seen it in her hotel room. She felt like she couldn't stand up there and preach because she felt so naked. And so, and then in that same conversation, it came up, you know, she was paid, and then her contract hit the internet. She took 70% of the money and all the different things. And people had so much to say about it. One of the main people that had something to say about it was Bishop E. Bernard Jordan. So there is a prophetic college meeting coming up Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And that video, you were giving us a breakdown of some of the things you're going to be addressing as which these prophets who are going into these churches and instead of leaving the church better financially, they leave them raped financially. So we're going to talk about it all on tonight, but we're going to start first. Oh, then the other thing is <clears throat> going to be the last one we'll discuss. You say, oh, and another thing, and then there's <laughs> no, Maud. No, no, this is the last one, for real. Because... I need to know tonight. You ain't got to answer now. Did you quit the Word Network or were you fired? And then I'm going to tell you live on this TV, on this stream thing here, what I heard that is being said about the reason why you had to quit or, or was fired. So you can address that and just dispel those rumors. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with Nita. Mm -hmm. So it is since I got Master Prophet here. And I'm going to show you a little piece of what he said, which is the whole reason why, one of the main reasons why, aside from me loving him and also these guys being connected. I'm going to tell you about that, that he's here tonight. So watch this video, listen carefully, and then when we come back, we're going to get into that conversation. Because we are looking at the possibility of a tragedy in the prophetic. People that have abused the prophetic. People that have abused it, whether it's in lifestyle, whether it is in behavior that is not conducive to what the prophetic needs to look like, and then looking at what the prophetic is, what is that office, and when we are going into churches, are we empowering the people or disempowering the people? Are we taking something away from the people for ourselves, Or are we empowering the community so that the community can be empowered by one's presence? How are we doing in the prophetic? Now, I don't want to get into your aloneness or your place in God. I'm sure that you already have that together. 
But have you now gotten so in the presence of God vertically? Because if you are with God vertically and your vertical don't translate horizontally, we need to question who you've been talking to vertically because it's not translating horizontally. Wow. What happens when the land can no longer sustain you? And this is what is happening in churches where the church can't afford to have the prophet because of the tragedy that happens after the prophet gets there. Mm. It costs the church to bring me in $10,000, but the church only has 9000 mm. And they borrowed the other 1000 mm. And now the church is left in a deficit. What does that picture begin to look like? And we want to look at this as a prophetic community because everything we do should be strengthening the church. Mm -hmm. What happens when my gift weakens your system? Mm. Well, it's not a gift. Mm. Wow. It's not a gift. It's about you. And when that happens, we become robbers of the land as opposed to being nourishers of the land because we're not replenishing it. Mm. We're taking away from it. Your gift, if you have a prophetic gift, it is supposed to be strengthening the church. And, and, and I tell people all the time, any person that does not strengthen our church when they come, I don't have them back. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is they're high maintenance and low value. When it's high maintenance, high maintenance and low value, that's depleting the land. Yeah. And what has happened is when our honorariums have become too high, the cost of bringing us in have become too high. You've got to look now, are you trying to build a community or eat up the resources that are in the environment? Have people lost faith in the prophetic yes. because of the way prophets have performed? Mm. Mm. Oh. Jesus. The people are your number one resources. Yes. Wow. That's why a commons need to be had because they are eating up the inhabitants thereof. And the land is no longer able to sustain it. Mm. If we don't handle this, you're about to become extinct in that. Are you in need of direction for a decision you have to make? Maybe you're curious about the future. If that's you, the founders of Zoe Ministries and the Company of Prophets are offering you free prophecy. Call 888 831-0434 Don't wait Call 888-831-0434 Do it today All right, and we are back. Now, you just saw the video. Those of you that are just coming in tonight, we're dealing with a few different things. The viral video when Bishop Bernard Jordan began to address this is right after the whole Juanita and Pastor Moore issue that happened in Virginia. When he began to address prophets that are bringing their gift to these churches, but somehow or another, the church is not ending up better. And then also the vow video concerning Benny Hinn. Bishop George Bloomer is here to talk about that. And then also the rumors concerning his um, job, his assignment there at the Word Network. And we're going to do all of this in about, uh, what, what time in there? Oh, yeah, about a good hour. Watch me. It's going to happen. All right, so Bishop Jordan. You made some key statements concerning prophets. When they come to people, churches, how they are supposed to be a gift to the church, how they're supposed to help the church and strengthen and empower the church. And you begin to send a strong rebuke. Talk to us about that. Well, we are seeing something. First of all, thank you for having mm -hmm. 
me on the show. Thank you for bringing Bishop Bloom on the show. We're having a prophetic college. And in the prophetic college, we've noticed that there's a lot of issues. Every prophetic college, there has been some drama that has happened. Yeah. Not something that we planned. It's just stuff that shows up in the space. Most of the time, we are in churches that preachers are preaching to us, but there's no response back and forth, except for touch your neighbor, say to your neighbor. When we open up the mic, we're shocked at what comes into the mic. So, Jesus did something very interesting, which I suggest every pastor do, and I have pastors do it, I do it myself. I say, who do men say that I am? That's why I read what the people say on the blogs. Mm. I get present to that. There was a time that I used to put my head in the sand, I wouldn't read it, and I would take, but I had to go through some courses, and I've had a coach that worked with me saying you got to disappear the meaning from it mm -hmm. and just listen to what is being said without any judgment. Mm -hmm. So I live into that world in that zone. So Jesus says, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. So Jesus wanted to know, what are they saying out there? So if Jesus was living today, he would say, what are they saying? What is the gossip on me out there? <laughs> what are the bloggers saying? What he'd are the bloggers are saying? He'll be, he'll be watching not only Larry Reed Live, but he would make sure his disciples are tuned into every social media site mm. to see what are they saying. Mm. And he does not correct what they're saying. Gotcha. He says, some say that thou art Jeremiah, some say thou art Elias or one of the prophets. They're talking about dead folks and reincarnation, Jesus never adds any judgment to it. Hmm. And then he says, before he asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? He listens to the say outside of the congregation before he listens to the say inside the congregation. Wait. It's good. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. It's good. What? So what has happened to us in our culture as preachers we only listen to the say of our congregation. We have not listened to the say outside of our churches. Well, but see, I think, I think the reason why I think that is important, and I say this on show all the time, because I think that preachers go to these churches and preach, and in an age that is very technological, every cell phone that is in your audience is a million people. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So you can no longer preach and teach as if you're only talking, and it, and it may not be uh, such a bad thing, as though you're only talking to your sheep. You're talking to your sheep, and then people who are just peeping in, who just have, uh, who are inquisitive. You're, it's really can be a great evangelism mo moment. You know, but as right now, it's not looking that good because people are peeking in and like, what in the world y'all got going on? Well, the reason is, is that you got to ask yourself the question. I ask myself the question this every day. Am I fit for the future? Mm. Oh. And we've got to look at, have we caught up with our evangelism with the technology of our day? Mm -hmm. So we are going to have this week <laughs> pastors, apostles, and prophets coming together, and leaders, and lay people, if I can say that. We are coming together to have a prophetic commons. There's no speaker. We want to open up conversation with the community. So during the time of this video that you played, we were sitting with a company for some of the prophets. And while we were sitting with the prophets, we began to look at what is a commons. First, we had to look at what a commons is not. And a commons is not about you. It's not about what you can get out of it. But it's an environment. And then we have to look at what are the tragedies of a common. We are right now in churches that are trying to catch up after the preacher leaves there. <laughs> that is not a gift. That's not a gift from God, nor is it a gift of the Spirit. So you said catch up, you mean like catch up financially because they're in a deficit? Financially, <laughs> because they've had to take care of the plane tickets, they had to take care of the hotel, they had to give them a set honorarium. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these preachers that are getting these set honorariums, they're not even worth the weight <laughs> of what has been delivered in the room. Mm -hmm. 
And you got people getting honorariums of five thousand dollar minimums. Yeah. Ten thousand dollar minimums. Some fifty. Fifty thousand dollar minimums. Seventy five thousand dollar minimums. And leave the church in the whole. This is a community. Mm. How do you leave your brother with the short end of the stick? Mm. You can't show me one prophet in the scripture that did this. And this was one of the challenges I had with my son. Mm. He says, Dad, I take it all. I said, that's not Jordan. <laughs> and then he started name. Now watch this. He started naming the preachers that took it all. Mm. And I says, that's not. I says, the prophet adds and strengthens the church. The local church, yeah. And so he started naming them and then started aligning with them. I says, son, this is not what I have raised. Mm. This is not what the spirit of God is bringing forth. I says, this is going to be judged because you do not... Take the church and leave the church. Even when the prophet ate all from the widow's woman's pot, mm -hmm. that woman had enough for three and a half years, and he stayed there to witness it. Mm -hmm. Listen, we have a prophetic tragedy because our commons have been abused. Yeah, the community has been abused. Okay, that, that, that I try to tell y'all the beginning of this show. That these two guys that are sitting to, right beside me, and I know some of you may be watching, oh, you saying that because you're friends with them. No, it don't work like that. And we ain't even like that, you know, when we deal. You say, look, nigga, you like this. Nigga, you like this, you know. But these are two of the most enlightened people <laughs> that I know. No, for real. Two of the most enlightened people. And what was so interesting to me was when I went to the prophetic college and then come to find out how, not just how all of us are connected. Go. My mom was actually pregnant with me when your spiritual father, both of your spiritual father, mm. had a team to come to her Baptist church, mm -hmm. prophesy over her, talked about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and she was carrying me, mm -hmm. and she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And so when I, when I came out, I got saved when I was young, and I started prophesying all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and the main thing I did was cast out demons. Mm -hmm. And so you're the prophet, you're the deliverance preacher, and then I end up running into you guys while I was talking about a story that both of you guys were talking um, connected to. I think this is very interesting. So tell tell me about this this prophet because you told a story in the prophetic, prophetic college when you were sitting in the audience and Jordan began to prophesy and y'all were all in the same church. I think it has something to do. We, we, we came out of the tabernacle of prayer, the center of hope for all people. For all people. For all people. <laughs> uh, we came from 41 Rockaway Avenue yeah. to uh, uh, Glenmore. Uh, 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 Glenmore Avenue, mm -hmm. Rockaway, Glenmore, Glenmore and, then uh, and then Jamaica, Jamaica. Queens. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're young men in the, uh, uh, in the ministry there. And uh, we... Uh, a tabernacle embraced uh, prophecy, but not like how it was beginning to mm. unfold. Okay. Which tag what you said, you know, evangelism and technology. Yeah. Something was happening and it was keeping it contained. And um, I'm sitting there, he sat a few rows uh, um, uh, 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 ahead of me, and uh, he got up and he gave a word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And it was a word of woe that God's going to start at one and end up at. I, he's going to kill from the pulpit to the door. Wait, hold on now. Uh, <laughs> well, see, that's the kind of prophecy stuff I remember. My mom and them was talking, hey, <laughs> oh, let me get up out of here. Yeah, because whenever they sometimes. prophesied, it was never good. And so he stands up in the church and begins to talk about, I think you said, I can't remember, I'm making up a number. You said there are going to be 31 devils. Yeah, to, to, uh, start at one and end at 31 or 32. I don't remember what the mm -hmm. number was. But see, I'm, I'm a troublemaker. So I stayed at the church. And I started counting them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, now, you, now who we're talking about, Tabernacle Prayer, is Apostle Johnny Washington. Mm -hmm. Now, in my hometown, they were the spooky people that had a church over there with Apostle um, Bozier. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. But, when, but, when they, but when they would go up in the tent, this is no lie. 
it will change the way the entire area felt. Yeah, and everybody, yeah. it's like them people over there, yeah. they having church. Yeah. Cause whenever they would do it, it would just literally change the way the whole city felt. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they used to be a, a, a convenient mark uh, uh, there and uh, park something in Goldsboro. And uh, they said that when the Tabernacle Prayer Crusade used to come, the wine sales and the cigarette sales dropped. <laughs> yeah, but still, but I, I'm from there. I'm from mm. a town outside of there called Pikeville. Uh, so I know that my aunt, my aunt Catherine Philemon Ozell would live right down the street from it. So I remember that as a little boy. And this is just so wild to me how everything just just comes together. Okay, so, <clears throat> so we got... We understand as it relates how the prophets are supposed to be op operating. I want to hear from you as it relates to the prophetic college because you are really the reason why the prophetic college start. Tell me what was in your mind. Um, that. several years ago, maybe about eight years ago, uh, or eight or nine years ago, when I uh, became the host for on the Word Network, I wanted to bring fathers and sons together in the prophetic area, oh, okay. and so uh, in, in at that time. Uh, there was a lot of preachers that wasn't touching Bernard Jordan, and I felt that, you know, what is the problem with him? So they kept on saying something like, why you got to call himself a master, master problems? So I called him and I said, would you come and be a part of a prophetic summit, sons and daughters? And his son was there and a, a bunch of prophets, and would, they, they all came together. And we first got the clarity to why he called himself master prophet. And it was very, very, very simple. You know, anything you do 10,000 times. You become a master at it. You got master chef and schoolmaster and master prophet. And, oh, that's yeah. and it was good, and, and that opened up more doors. But that thing stayed in, in, in my spirit. And so uh, when we were getting ready to uh, um, uh, do our Warfare Ecology Conference this year, I, d uh, I decided that uh, I wanted to bring something like that back together again. Mm -hmm. And so the prophetic uh, 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 college and then the uh, um, the uh, got started that way. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I always knew that I'm not gonna be the head of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just wanted to use my mm -hmm. platform and influence to bring a few people together and we stand back and watch whoever the smoke rises on, that's how you choose a pope, yeah. whoever the smoke rises on, you go with them <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth and the Lord, but the Lord keeps on dropping uh, uh, prophetic corrections in our hands. Yeah, that's what, yeah. that's the thing that I know. Is, if you gotta go back on the YouTube channel and watch because I recorded it step by step, everything that happened. There was so much, as my master prophet put a few minutes ago, he called it drama that happened surrounded. But really what it was, it was the clash of these prophets and their egos and their motivations, maybe even their character and their behavior. Upbringing. And, upbringing. Mm. Also, the father fracture. A lot of these young prophets had um, issues with either their spiritual father or their natural father. So then when you you guys, as you know, the fathers coming in and making corrections, there were some things that, were, that happened there. Just for about two minutes, I'm going to talk about that. What do you see happening as it relates to the young prophets and these young spiritual um, preaching machines as it relates to people like you and relates to you. I want to hear from both of you guys and listen to that. What do you see concerning I am. Um, I feel that um, I'm, I, I'm always bothered when one of the young prophets do something and everyone tries to kill him. That, that, that oh, bothers me. Okay. Um, I, I know that they're called. Everyone has to eat. Uh, if, if something happens to you and you're 23 years old mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to live until you're 80 years old, what are you going to do for the next yeah you know 60 years you know so i that that that's where i'm at i don't like to pull covers off of anybody i'm all about covering but, but don't push me you know the <laughs> you, you know uh, mm -hmm. um and uh i think that's uh some of them uh is not aware of the trauma doctrine and i call it a trauma doctrine mm -hmm. because they're traumatized by something that becomes uh their uh life view how they see the world their world view and uh, they upset with you just for walking in the door for the fact that mm -hmm. you're 60 and they're 20 and they think they're as anointed as you are. And so they may well be. But um, travel will do some things to you that <laughs> education cannot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I feel that me and, 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 and Prophet Jordan coming together, it, it doesn't, it, it's, it's almost like uh, where does that come from? What, what are they doing? Are they trying to... Uh, uh, reinvent themselves. No, I, 
I'm not having any problems, and 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 he, and, ain't and, 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 and he can live off of his inheritance, and so. <laughs> So, you know, that's that's an inside <laughs> joke because it's like a rumor that everybody a rumor that his mentor left him billions of dollars, but it's not that's, true. Well, how you know is it true or not? It ain't true. But you, you, <laughs> see this now you know I researched them. That ain't true. You can't research that. I can't research that. That you can't research that. You, you think you must think it's true. Huh? Well, you know. Well, Bishop isn't true. He left me his faith. Okay. Oh, okay. Well. I just believe, I just believe, I just believe in dollars <laughs> and dollars talk. <laughs> and, and, and I believe in cents. Okay, so <laughs> okay, now, same question to you. So we have a generation, you know, I was um, with some of the young people at the church and they were talking and they said, man, he just sunned you. And I looked and, you know, and they were talking about basketball. Mm. I said, son, you? They said, yes. Yeah. Is, is that a good thing? Because, you know, I'm 60. They said, oh, no, that means that they just, you know, they just did the men just now. They broke their ankles. Mm -hmm. I say, breaking your ankles. <laughs> and I looked at the plan of the enemy. Mm. We have a generation that made the word son evil. Wow. Mm. Derogatory. Wow. To the point now that we have people saying, you're not my father, you, but you can be my uncle. Mm -hmm. So we have something spiritually happening psychologically mm -hmm. that we have people that are of the generation when we grew up, um, Bishop Bloom, if somebody just, if, if, if Bishop, if Apostle Washington came by and said, hey, come here, son, that was like, that was that was that an your day. Woo! That was like, wow. Or even said, "Bless you, son." Bless you, ah. son. It was like it made your day. And today, you say, "Bless you, son," or "Come here, son." I'm not your son. Hmm. You're and my I'm, spiritual father. And yet, we had a day <laughs> of a community where every adult on the block was your mother and your father. But well, that's not the world we live in now. And, and a lot of you guys as friends are not taking care of their children. They're having these babies out here. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so the whole, they, all the people start growing up and they don't have no fathers and, and they're not getting any kind of love and recognition in, in the time or legitimacy from their father. And it's just the grace of God they end up getting the Holy Ghost and getting saved wanting to preach. You know, so they're going, that's the reason why they got no problems because y'all's friends won't own their children. What friends? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. God, I'm just saying wait, wait, wait. None of my friends, because anyone that is in my life, and I know that they're not handling their business, I confront them. I believe that. Under, under my watch, not on my watch. And I've had a lot of men that I had to say, you need to take care of your responsibility with your child. Mm. And I'm very serious about it. Because not just your responsibility to throw money at your child. I grew up where my father came home every day mm. during the day, but on the weekend he was absent. Mm. And I'm gonna get a little transparent here for a moment. And I remember my mother taking me to church, doing everything, and I was part of the Boy Scouts, and they had a blue and gold day. My mother couldn't go because it was only fathers and sons. I was sitting at the window looking across the street at the church, Cornerstone Baptist Church, where I was a part of during that time in the Boy Scouts. And my father told me he was going to be there. I was dressed up in my Boy Scout uniform, waiting. And then I watched the kids going in. I was dressed from 12 o'clock. The event was supposed to happen at 3. And stayed there in the window until the sun went down. And my father never showed up. Mm, I understand. Mm. Then my mother says, now my mother would have taken me, but it was only fathers and sons. My mother says, pull your clothes off. I didn't have nothing to eat that day because I chose not to. I was looking for my father. And my father didn't appear until Monday night. Now, I honor my father. I had to work through that issue in my heart. 
But when a child grows up without the emotional embrace of his father, he's going to run into predators in the church. Yikes. Or yes. in the community. Yikes. That is going to abuse them. And use them. And use them. So the fathering thing is a serious issue. But when I was doing this study, I just finished a book dealing with this. It's not available to the public. But I just did a book, and I was surprised at the data that's about 60%, almost 60% of African-American males, no, African-American homes will grow up without a father. But we haven't even counted how many are going to grow up without an emotional connected father there, which the data is even higher. We as black preachers, we are now doing double duty because in the white culture, it is about 20% or so. Yeah. Hispanics, about 39 <clears throat> The black pastor has more stress on him than any other pastor because of the social conditions he's got to deal with in the community. That's a lot of responsibility. And, and I know that from my 20 years of pastor. <clears throat> you don't like me to say that. But, um, oh, but you're going back. But I don't know about that one, Bishop. You're going back. That might be the one prophecy you speak that never come to pass. You'll see. But, 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 <laughs> but look. <laughs> But for real, because that was a lot, of, and I I didn't know this till later on. I'm like, wow, I really was, and the mistakes I made were because I did not know that I was fulfilling that role. Because what some people do will throw you in that father fracture as a as a foster father. But let me say something, because I know what that feel like. Bishop Bloomer knows what that feel like. I'm calling Bishop Bloomer sometime. He said, "Wait." I'm taking my grandson. I got my grandchildren with me. I'm taking them to the movies. I said, yeah, I got my grandchildren with me. And I did all that I could do. I have five children to pour into my children. I, I, I poured into my children so much until I was a helicopter father. Mm -hmm. You know, I went up to their open schools. Uh, my, my sons would tell you they would be embarrassed because they, they would see this man getting out of limousines with the cape on and they would whisper and they were the only <laughs> black kids in the school says, your father's in the building because if I just smelled something was wrong, if I sensed something, <laughs> yes. I went down to the school and I talked to the teachers. I had my, children, I had my sons in programs. Um, I had my daughters in charm school. I had all of my boys were martial artists. They all know martial arts. And I put so much in them that I think mm. that they resented it mm. later because their story was not like the stories of those mm. that they almost despise knowing they had a father there that was present that mm. they try to find a made way to make it as if something was wrong with a father being there I totally as a father who I recently went through with my children I totally get that that's that's deep. Okay, so you can you can't come back. You just we gotta do some. Make sure y'all hit that cash app and give because I gotta bring him back. <laughs> uh, I gotta bring him back, but um, and um, because that is a conversation that really needs it really needs to be had. Okay, now Benny Hinn, we gotta get to that. For those of you that do not, I'm gonna know, drink some water. <laughs> Benny Hinn made a statement. This is Ben Tahin. He's right here. This is Ben Tahin. Ben Tahin. You know, I always liked Ben Tahin. When he would come on the TV, bitch, it seemed like I would feel something. I don't know what that something was. But y'all you know, feel something that just made me feel just really, really touched by God. <coughs> <clears throat> but anyway, he says something. But this is what I always say about Ben Tahin. God knows he sang them songs and he do that one tongue and, and folk get healed. That's what I like, but I ain't never liked his teaching because for me, it just seemed like I didn't, it was like, this is not his calling. He should just sing a song and just ask people to stretch their faith to get their arms and their knees and knuckles back as opposed to doing any kind of teaching because it just didn't never go good for me. But anyway, he done came forth and done spoke out against prosperity. In fact, he said he don't even want that word to be used. He don't like it at all. I done a follow-up video. 
Um, what? Yes, he said he doesn't. No, now, yes, we had, he now we had to rip pages out of the Bible. Bishop, listen to me. You know I'll be telling no lies. He said that. I don't believe he said that. He, he can't be I'm that. I'm going to say he the link. Y'all know what's on the page. That's what he said. And he talked about the $1,000 seed. Now, I do think <clears throat> when I saw your video, and I said this on my show, that you and, and Benny were sort of saying the same thing because he was talking about the gimmicks. And I think you guys were saying the same thing there. But I still feel like there's something off there. So I want to get your words on that. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to play the video of what Benny said, Ben to end. Then I'm going to play the video of what Skinny Bishop, <laughs> what Bishop George Bloomer said. And then we're going to come right back and we'll hear right from the horse's mouth. We ain't got to watch no, video, no viral video. We got him here tonight. He's going to say it out of his own mouth what he think concerning this here. Be right back. And I'm sorry to say that prosperity has gone a little crazy. And I'm correcting my own uh, 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 theology. And you need to all know it. Because when I read the Bible now, I don't see the Bible in the same eyes I saw the Bible 20 years ago. And Steve Strang from Charisma, whom we go back years, he actually, he was in my wedding. People don't even know that Charisma Magazine began with my father-in-law. Charisma Magazine started with Roy Harden, and I married his daughter. So Steve Strang was in, in my wedding. We go way back. And he's already asked me, said, are you ready to make it public? I said, well, not totally. Because I don't want to hurt my friends whom I love who believe things I don't believe anymore. And I will tell you now something that is, is going to shock you. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense to say, give $1,000. I think it's offense to the Holy Spirit to place a price on the gospel. I'm done with it. I will never... Again, ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. Are you, did you hear me? I think that hurts the gospel. So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life. And frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. So I, I, I had a guy... Well, I'll tell you who. It was Dan Willis. And I, I, I love Dan with all my heart. I said, don't you dare preach that message again. Yeah. <laughs> Just a few days ago. I said, no, no. I said, when, when, I'm not going to hear it. I don't want to be a part of it. So I, when they invite me to telethons, I think they will not like me anymore. <laughs> because if you look at the Word of God, I don't want to get into it now. Am I shocking you? Good, let's have a high five on this one. If I hear one more time, break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. I, I, I think that's buying the gospel, that's buying the blessing, that's grieving the Holy Spirit. That's about all I will say. If you are not giving because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. I think giving has become such a gimmick, it's making me sick to my stomach. And I've been sick for a while too, I just couldn't say it. And now the lid is off. I've had it. You know why? I don't want to get to heaven and be rebuked. Amen. No, I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. And the blessings of God are not for sale. And miracles are not for sale. And prosperity is not for sale. I am not saying that the prosperity gospel is all correct. I'm also not saying that the prosperity gospel is all wrong. 
What I'm saying is that there are bad people everywhere. Bad police officers, bad sheriffs, bad judges, bad preachers, bad Christians. Heck, they're bad dressers. Some people just can't dress. <laughs> bad. But it doesn't mean that everything is off because of it. Dan Willis is a friend of mine, pastors a church in Chicago. Dan Willis, name was called and rebuked openly. And then it was said that Dan received the rebuke. And I say this to you, Dan, if you received that rebuke, then you revoke the blessings of God on the life of your son. For it was the thousand dollar seed that you had sown on behalf of your son and God delivered him out of that crisis and now he's a preacher in your pulpit. And if you, if you return back to agreeing with being rebuked for something that you did as it related to your faith, you have revoked the blessings of God on the life of your son. Now listen to me, there are crooks and charlatans out there everywhere, but I tell you this, the scriptures tell us that blessed is the cheerful giver, liberal soul shall be made fat. The scripture says that uh, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. I know the scriptures. The scripture says give and it shall be given unto you good measures pressed down shaken together and running over. The scriptures tell us that God will bless 30, 60, and 100 fold. The scriptures also tells us that the Lord spoke to Moses to go down to Egypt and to receive an offering of the children of Israel. And this is the offering that you should take of gold and of silver, of goat's hair, dyed purple, etc. So there are offerings of command, there are free will offerings, there's tithe, there's sacrificial offerings, there's offerings of, uh, of, of repentance, there's sin offerings, there are trespass offerings. Whichever offering you fit into, the God that we serve has established his kingdom on this principle. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. And I say to you, Pastor Benny, I say to you, Pastor Benny, this morning on behalf of the clergy around the world, that your convictions are correct, but they're personal. And I just ask you to do one thing, one thing. Share with the body of Christ, scripturally, like I just did, and then we'll be fine. If not, you owe the body of Christ a refund on all of the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars that you have received from them when you told them that this is the word of God. Bishop George Bloomer, I'm waiting on your response. Want to become a wellness coach or holistic health counselor? Get certified with Dr. Womack. As a master herbalist with over 30 years of experience, your learning and your training will be extensive. Go to bishopwomack.com, click services, and go to the wellness portal and begin healing yourself and others today. Holistic doctor and educator Shema Womack can help you discover how to eat your way to healing, get out of debt, improve your well-being and live the prosperous life join him weekly on wellness wednesdays on a live conference call for teaching and a free question and answer session wellness wednesdays with the prophetic physician joined by dowling 888-601-9625 that's 888-601-9625 and we are back larry live take your time right now and share if you're on facebook on periscope if you're watching on youtube hello i'm in the comment section with you live this has already aired but on october the 11th we'll be back live over there
Now, this is what I want to go ahead and tell you about this man here, Dr. Sean Maro Matt. Give me 15 seconds. This man is the modern day Dr. CV, except he ain't got all the wives and that drama going on around his life. So, this is what I need for you guys to do. I need for you, if you're sick, if you got something that is going on, you know what? I just got convicted when I said it because I got cyanitis and I went to the doctor versus going to Dr. Shama. I'm going to tell you why. You can tell me that after the show is over. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what you're going to say. Because Dr. Shama, see, he, it worked, but you got to eat like a rabbit. No, you eat the food that God created. Rabbit. You know, you eat food that comes from seed and get off of that genetic modified food. Rabbit. You eat that which God has dis de determined. I've been on his program. And you look really good. You look, re look. And I feel great. Bishop looks, he, what are you, 61 or 60? I'm 60. Oh, he's my like elder. <laughs> <laughs> and and look, very, very, look very good. But I'm just saying. But anyway. Wednesdays, he has a, a call that he's always on. For those of you that cannot get hold of him, he's, on Wednesdays, he has a call that he's always on. At the end of the call, he can answer your questions. You get into his program. All right, so let's get back to the Commodore station. Ben to him. Now, there are a few questions about the video I want to ask you, and then you can go in and, and explain anything else you want to say. In the video, key thing that you said, you said there's some things about the whole prosperity gospel or the prosperity preacher thing that's not right. Are you referring to the same thing he's talking about when it comes to the gimmicks or things of that nature? Um, first, I want to say is that Benny Hen is a friend of mine, and um, we're not in conflict and we're not fighting each other uh, on this. Um, what Benny Hen said was he said it, and the way that he said it sent shockwaves through the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Pastors' um, offerings dropped some up to amounts like 30%. Whoa. It, it yeah. really, really happened, okay? Uh, and, and so that needed, he, he needed to qualify what he was saying. So that's, that's, that's that with me and, me, me and Pastor Benny. So we're, we're, we're good there. Um, the $1,000 seed, I still have a problem with because you, you, you could say whatever you want to say about anything, but once a person experience it, talk them out of that. Uh, my mother came up out of hospice and lived nine months Mm -hmm. because of a prayer that she said to me. She said, son, I want to be here for Christmas and Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and um, I sold a $1,000 seed every Sunday over and above my tithe and my offering. Mm -hmm. And I saw my mother come off of the life support machine, come out of dialysis and come out of, 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 of hospice and go home and kick, cook in her own kitchen. And during that season, Benny was in agreement with me as we were praying together, and I did a program where I showed my mother's pictures on the program where she had Wait, come up out of it. I yeah. remember, remember that. that. I yeah. remember that. So, 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 so nobody's going to tell me, and I'm not going to let anybody tell you that wow. the $1,000 seed or whatever amount of seed that your faith pushes you to is not going to work. So question. Okay. So are, you're not saying everybody who sows a $1,000 seed is going to magically have these things to happen. You're not saying that. No, I'm not saying that. But, so it, it's more than a $1,000 seed. It's, it's faith. It's faith. Okay. It's faith. And, and, and faith has to be exercised. You, you exercise uh, um, your faith. But he's saying that what he was saying that I disagree with is that there's nowhere in the scriptures where God has ever commanded anyone to give a thousand or anything oh, other than that. that, and that's not true. I know that's not. In the book of Exodus, the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, "Go down to the children of Israel and receive an offering from them, and this specifically is the offering that you're to take: gold and silver yeah. and mm -hmm. scarlet and so, etc., and things that was going to be needed for the upbuilding of the temple." Um, then the language of God in the Old Testament, in the Torah, is the language of a thousand. It's mentioned 500 mm -hmm. times in scripture. Uh, and uh, thou count upon a thousand hills and uh, uh, one day is as a thousand. The, the, a the, thousand the, the, times more. The thousand times more, is it, that, that, that's the language of it. And so where I agree with him at is that there's you know, some, uh, I call them knuckleheads <laughs> that just mm -hmm. are greedy and they go after and the spirit of greed is on them and they go and they manipulate people. I've never preached a prosperity mm -hmm. uh, 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 message. I don't know what they're talking about. I, I, I preach Jesus. I preach the Bible, and that is prosperous. Uh, you, you know, and he said in the last video he does not even like the word prosperity. Well, see, that's got to be watched, and I think that 
when I look at the scripture in, in Luke 19, when it talks about Zacchaeus, and um, um, Benny Hinn and I, we go back. I prophesied his last son mm-hmm. and named his last son. Mm-hmm. And my wife was already pregnant at the time with our last one and prophesied before his wife, Suzanne, got pregnant. I prophesied that she would be pregnant, she would give birth to a son, and his name would be called Joshua. Mm-hmm. And the word of the Lord came to pass. But um, in, in, in um, Luke 19, it says that when Zacchaeus was discovered, he says in verse 8, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. So if this is the conviction he really feels, he should come and give half his possession to the poor. <laughs> and if I cheated anybody, <laughs> no, no, this is the word. If I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Aye, aye, aye. So this would be a great time as a mission if people just wrote him <laughs> based on his confession. <laughs> no, because if you really have felt this, mm. this will clear his consciousness when he stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, so let me say, okay, let me say this. Now, this, this, this is what I want to say concerning this. <clears throat> For those of you that are watching that, because our audience is everybody. Now, I'm you, going, you what? This, you said, my audience is everybody. Your audience is everybody, yes. It's, every, it's all different yeah. kind of people. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this, and they know they should know if they watch me. I ain't with a whole lot of crazy men and nigger men. But when it comes down to this thousand dollar seat, I don't know who I heard what say something. What about peppermint? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who I heard say it first. But for me, when it came to the thousand dollar seat, I'm like, these niggas is crazy. A thousand dollars? You go, yeah, fifteen hundred dollars, you get you a nice car, that probably lets you through two or three years in the country. So, <laughs> for me, that was, I'm like, I, they got to be money hungry or something because this doesn't make no sense to me. Now, I'm going to say this. I have, I didn't sow my first thousand dollar seed to some years ago. And when I sold that thousand, and I never asked nobody for a thousand dollar seed, neither. <clears throat> but when I sold that thousand dollar seed, there was such a significant change. And and my, my faith was in it because as I said, this I ain't never did. People always talk about it. I see it in the Bible, all the scriptures, y'all, y'all name. I said that I need a turn around <clears throat> for real, for real. <clears throat> and I and from that day that I sold that thousand dollar seed, and every time I sold a thousand dollar seed, my money changed. Um, not just my money, but my st- my quality of life. The creative ideas. Mm-hmm. This show is the result of a thousand dollar seed. Everything that it is a thousand dollar seed. The last time I sold a thousand dollar seed, I think I was at your church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sold, and I know this is gonna sound funny, but this is no lie. I sold a thousand dollar seed on what I want wanted to make yeah. that month. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said I don't want to make when I was pastoring. <clears throat> I made well every month. I said, I want to go back to making at least five figures a month, at least. From that $1,000 seed to now, every month, I'm, I go back and look. I'm like, wow, did I, how did I bring that into my business? Mm-hmm. And, and when I sold it, check this, before I got home, I had made and done a $12,000 deal. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even planned before I even went. I didn't even know what was going to happen. In fact, it was one of my former clients, and Kendall had asked me, um, do you think <coughs> you're probably going to do that deal again? I said, no, probably not. But then I sold the $1,000, no mm-hmm. lie. The deal was done before I got back to Atlanta, Georgia. So the $1,000 seed thing, <coughs> we only got a few more minutes, so we got to jump to this other story. Um, if you're out there, and, and you know somewhere or someone, a ministry, a man of God, a prophet, that you know, number one, is integral and is a man of God. And you want to sow that $1,000 seed. Larry Reed is not going to stop you from doing it. Because I'm going to tell you, I've seen results. And great, massive, powerful 
results I've seen them and I have it recorded and anybody close to me know I write down and date and time stuff just out for no reason and I've seen things happen with the thousand dollar seed that's that and I ain't gonna say and that's just the giving a seed I'm the the tithe is another thing the taroma is a whole another thing because I started all that the next month I don't even want to tell my business how, how good God been but the Lord has been good but I want you to see something else here Larry if we look at the scripture, the thousand dollar seed is nothing compared to the New Testament church. We're going to go by the New Testament model. Oh boy. In the book of Acts, oh the boy. Bible, well, well, before we get to the book of Acts, the Bible says they gave large sums of money for a lie to be told. We need to know why we give money. We give seed because God gives seed to the sower. That's number one. Number two, when we give seed, the first time, and Bishop Bloomer does a masterful job on this, the first time worship is ever done, clapping our hands in church is not worship. Shouting in church is not worship. There can't be any worship without a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's number one. This is a whole spiritual connection. This is why I had an issue when I looked at the video and saw T.I., Stopping people from his group from worship. Yeah, he now, did. Now, 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 let me just say something here for a moment. But we don't stop them from buying Hennessy. <laughs> we don't stop them from being in the clubs. But if, let's say the church was crooked. Our money only changed hands maybe one time in our community. Jewish money changes at least seven to 11 times. Asians, five to six times. The one time a black dollar can transfer to an institution that is not run by whites and you stop it, I have a problem with your blackness. Oh, okay, you definitely got to come back. And we, got, and we got to look at this. But what is the attack on the $1,000 seed? It's the breakthrough seed. In the book of Acts, most people would have been offended because they brought houses, lands, mm. and fields, watch it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. feet, and they distributed it as they saw fit. Yeah, so everybody have all things in common. Yes. So, so, so that's Bible. So a $1,000 seed, you can't even get, that's not even rent in an apartment today. Not in I don't even know why we even talking about the $1,000 seed. I'm kind of insulted because the $1,000 seed is really no money because no one can find an apartment today for 1000 bucks. Yeah, many people buying cars that uh, the notes are 1200 a month. Right. Okay, now, <clears throat> we got to get to this topic because you got to catch a plane. But we just about all this. Thing. You got to come back, Bishop. You have to come back. You're controversial and I just love it. Okay, but anyway, there was this picture. <coughs> Now, I'm going to share everything on the backdrop that I know concerning this, and I want to get George Bloomer's answer. There was a picture that was retweeted by the owner of the Word Network. I'm going to get some water. <laughs> and there were many of us that saw this tweet. I won't even go into send I never sent it to George Bloomer. I'm just going to say that I, I was not the one to send it to George Bloomer. But the man in the middle is the owner of the Word Network. And somebody, just to catch everybody up, the Word Network advertises itself as the largest black gospel something or another. You probably know it by heart. But whatever it is, black is in there. And the problem that Larry had with it was that, now I already knew <coughs> that the Word Network was owned by a white man or a Jew. I think he's Jewish. Yeah. <coughs> I already knew that. But I knew that most people thought it was black owned. TBN had that thing. Wow, a black network's come, come up. Black folk have their own network. I noticed why the people were giving their money and every, everything. So, but a lot of people did not know that. So when I saw him tweet this picture that is actually from a blog. This blog <coughs> excuse me, basically talked about how the white owner was owning all these black preachers who some paid to be on the network, 
some uh, assist the network and being um, what it is and how he would think it was okay to tweet this picture when this vlog, or actually this blog, was having this sort of racist sort of undertone with all these black preachers. That thing got up under my darn skin. So then later on as my day went on, and maybe it was next day, somebody tells me, hey, over here at this other network, the owner of, it's allegedly, put the legend on the net. <laughs> that allegedly the other owner called the owner of this black network could not be true, could be true, could not be true. And now we found out that George Bloomer got fired from the word network. I said, now wait a minute, hold on now, wait a minute. Skinny George, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Skin, he got fired from the network. I said, the only reason why. I know at least North Carolina, the only reason why I didn't watch the word network is for George. I said, this don't make no sense. <clears throat> There's somebody else about, he got, the the owner allegedly said that he got fired because he think he too, too big for the network. And then somebody else was saying, oh, he took some money from the network. Then somebody else said, well, he quit, but he had to quit. I said, now, wait a minute now. Mm. Now, y'all know one thing I do whenever anybody's name mm. come up or even lightly, even when this happened live on the show, I go to that person and I find out what's going on. And I did. And now he's here. So tell us what in the whole hell and the heaven happened with this whole, with this whole ordeal. I was, um, I've been at the Word Network between uh, uh, eight or ten years. I got to figure out whether it was well over eight years at the at, at the Word Network, and I came when we were in a little studio at ADL, and uh, uh, Kevin Adele built the new studio, and I I came over I came over there. I'm not I'm not angry or fighting Kevin Adele or what have you. Um, when I came to the Word Network, I was George Bloomer. I had a name, yeah, and um, I had a platform. I had influence. And when I decided that my time and tenure was done at the Word Network, I left there. So I came as George Bloomer, and I left the Word Network as George Bloomer. <laughs> so the Word Network has been very, very good to me and kind um, uh, uh, to me. It has given me exposure and has placed me in hundreds of millions of homes. Mm -hmm. But let us be very, very clear about this. The network wasn't only good to me. I was also good to the network. Yeah. Uh, whether it's the, uh, in many, many ways. We came to a head, first of all, I was not fired from the Word Network because he would never do that. Um, I was not pushed out from the Word Network because he would never do that. Um, I quit uh, eight days ago and kept it quiet. Mm. They continue to leak things out. Uh, yeah, that's how I got it. Okay. I didn't pick up the phone and call you or call Jordan or call my sons and daughters or nothing right. like that. I didn't call anybody. And anybody that feels that I need to call them would be out of their cotton-picking mind <laughs> because this is how I function and how I operate. When I got divorced, I was divorced for three years before <laughs> anybody, you know, you was in North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, North Anybody Carolina. in North Carolina <laughs> even knew about it. I, I'm, that's the type of person I am. I'm all about covering. Mm. I never stole any money from the Word Network. In fact, the Word Network owes me to the tune of about $100,000 right now. I've, I've never stolen anything. You can't get money from <laughs> the Word Network because the product and, and the donations goes through a call center Pause. and goes directly. Oh, wait a minute. That's what some folk making a gear. They owe you Bishop Bloom is right. being kind. They are forcing me to tell the entire story. Yeah, because I heard that you stole. How? How would I get any, how would I get, you You. you, you pick up the phone, and it's the Word Network, and you give your, your card or what have you, and it goes through their system. What, how, how could there be any way to, 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 to there's, 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 that's, that's, how and can that's steal? And that's, how do I steal? And now it has taken this to another level because that's the defamation, defamation. of my character. Yeah. Okay? And so that is a, a, um, a very, very serious charge. So if that's what they're making 
those charges, then they need to bring bring that on. Mm. And I'm 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 ready for that. Uh, um, I've been uh, um, a a honest person. I've been uh, um, clean, full of integrity. Everybody has their issues, and everybody has mm. their their vices, and everybody has a a altar that you can go to mm. and <laughs> ask the Lord to help you with. And I live my life like that. But this thing came to a head with that picture that you just got finished sewing, mm -hmm. and I need to calm down because I feel it rising. Up <laughs> let it rise. Let it's, it it's rise. The, no, I said, I said, I said, I said this when I posted. I said, and all of the Africa in me is upset. So you let Africa rise. What people do not understand, and mm. some folks in the Caucasian community, they do not understand our trauma doctrine. They don't understand <coughs> to paint your face black. To what? To paint your face black. To what? Say it again. Or to dress up. I'm not fooling with him. Or to dress up <laughs> in a pimp's outfit. And he didn't do that. That 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 Kevin didn't do that. Right. He didn't dress himself up in the pimp. But he retweeted. He retweeted it. Uh, after being there for eight years, things like this comes all the time. I don't understand why this time it was. It was funny to him and it was okay. And I told him it's not good. I told him it's not okay. I told him don't do it again. And that was a discussion that I had with him and his accountant in the hallway. Later on that afternoon, he tweeted, uh, he cut the picture out and had my picture there and under it he had the word tattoo. Now tattoo, tattoo is the little boy of the man on Fantasy Island, okay? So now you... you and they said the plane. The, the plane, plane the boss, plane. the plane. Boss, mm. boss. Ah, yeah, 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 the yeah, plane. Yeah. Oh he does not God. understand what this is, what, what, what's going on. I told him not to. He then called me, and when he called me, I answered the phone, and I told him that that mm, was not right. Mm -hmm. And his office was filled with other people. Now you have the bishop of the Word Network, Using four, I'm that angry right. that I am cussing over the phone. You're not going to get me to lie. No one is going to get me to lie. Mm. No one is going to blackmail me. No, no, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be silent. I'll be quiet. But if we're going to tell the truth, we're going to tell the tell truth. You. Because there's an altar where you can get forgiveness from. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. I'm really, really saved. Mm. Now, and they still need deliverance. But I really need <laughs> saved. So let me conclude with that. And I told him that. Okay. He retweeted it again. What? I'm, wait a minute. I mean, to me. Did you know that? I wouldn't say retweeted. He, ah, he tweeted it. Daunting. He tweeted it to me again. And so at that point, wait a minute. at that point, oh, I Jesus. sent him a text that is yay long describing all of the things that is wrong, all of the problems that we're having, so on and so forth. And he got upset. And he texted me back. And when he texted me back, I kept all of the texts. So oh, that's good. every single bit of correspondence that we've had. I want to apologize because I'm not going to be talking like this a lot. I want to apologize to all of the thousands of people who have followed me and watched me on the Word Network who come up to me in restaurants, in airports, in church services saying, I didn't get my Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get my package. And I called my staff and put my staff together and I sent out 1,762 packages to people who had not gotten their product from the Word Network in nine months. On my own dime, I put a package together. On your own dime. On my own dime. I paid for it because my integrity and in my name is all that I have. All you got. People don't know God. They haven't seen God, but they know godly people. And they know men of God. And so they trust that I know God and I've seen them. And they give into that. To take what God has given to the Word Network. And for this person to call me out of my name for no reason because I won't bow down to him. To tell me, you're going to do it this way or I'm going to take your time from you. You could have all of the time. And I can sit at home. I'm, and I would have not been on your program tonight because you've been asking me to come on for a long time a with long your troublemaking time. self. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I would not be on this program today 
had he just let me quit and left me alone. But he wants to sabotage yeah. me. He wants to soil my name. He wants to do me in that way. And that's not proper. Now I'll say this. Mm. The first network that introduced me into television was TCT. Mm. Total Christian Television. 20 something years ago. Uh, uh, the Kunks. Uh, uh, yeah. Golf. And, and Mama Tina and Golf. The first set of cameras I had in my church wow. was from TCT. They gave it to me to put me on TV. Mm. They put me on TV. If you want to see George Bloomer, I'm going home. Going home. Going That's home. where I'm going. I'm going wow. home. I'm not in conflict with TBN, with Daystar, with Impact, with anybody. And any time they tried to hold me back from those places, I always went. Listen to me. My greatest fear and my greatest problem, my heartbeat is that I left my sons and my daughters over there. I feel like Daniel when you yeah. come out of uh, you come out of Jerusalem and you're in Babylon. Although you're in Babylon, but you 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 feel bad, so you're mourning Daniel chapter number ten over and over because of all who was left there. And I pray that God would um, continue to cover that house because I believe that's one of the reasons why he sent me here. I don't have a prophecy of doom. I'm not trying to kill Kevin Adele. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you one thing about Kevin Adele that is really, really good, and I've always liked this, is that he's a family guy. That's, that's what blew me away. He's a family guy. Loves his wife, loves his children, lo 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 loves his daughter. He comes to work, goes home. He's he, the moral people. He's not saved. I don't know what his spirituality is. I'm not, I'm not getting into that. But I do know that he's more. He's more moral in, in, in that respect than some people who, who wear collars. I know that's But right. you don't get the opportunity. You don't get the opportunity or the luxury to punk George Bloomer. But why, but when I don't to call George Bloomer... <coughs> The N word. Hold on a minute. No, he didn't say that, but in that in in that in I, that I, picture, I, yeah, you're ready to go somewhere. Anyway, but, but, but because say, I say the N word all the time, but I don't understand. And you know what the N word is? What? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. <laughs> but look, <laughs> but look, but I don't understand why the the taunting to after you say this is not okay for me. I don't like this. This is a sensitive area for me. To then just disregard. That's like counseling one on one mm. and relationship one on one. You have to respect how the other person feel, and then to dig dig at you again, retweet it, and then to add tattoo to it. Is that a receptacle? The the I'm going to make up a word. You make up a lot of words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idiotic idioticacy <laughs> of a person is when you do something that bad. In this time and day, yeah, and you text to it. text it. That's dumb. Wow. <laughs> let's hold that. let's hold oh, this. That. Let's hold this here. <laughs> You're gonna show me what's in that. Phone. <laughs> wow. Mm. I felt like <clears throat> I felt like it had to be something. I didn't think it would be that, but I felt like it had to be. Something, but I didn't really think that the guy. Can, can, can I say one more thing yeah, before I yeah. catch this plane? And I almost feel like crying, but it's 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 it's, it's, it's the truth. You go ahead, let it out. God is God is an amazing God, and I don't always understand God's logic or His reasoning. And He and He says in the Word that we wouldn't His ways and His thoughts. I don't want to be jealous of anybody what anybody got, but what I do not understand mm -hmm. is how that. We can give of ourselves, of our resources, of our finances. And a person can buy cars and houses and fly on uh, uh, posh jet planes and private jets and, 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 and what have you. How the Lord could just stand by and that person can rake that in from our community mm. and then don't honor us. Enough is enough. It's just... It just wasn't enough. And if I didn't have any other place to go, I would have went home. But I was not going to be there. And I apologize openly to all of the people. And I'm not saying, well, uh, 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 they said, well, when did you know this, Bishop Bl George Blumenthal? I knew it 
in the hallway when it was done to me. It had never been done to me before. Mm. That never been done to me before. Did I hear things like that? Yeah, but it never been done to me before. I yeah. would come in, do my job, and, and go. But he picked the wrong one when he did it that <laughs> afternoon. Because I'm not, I, I, I'm not doing that. And I love God's people, but they deserve, they deserve their, their, their product on time. And mm. I've made good. I've sat in rooms where people have said things about the network, and I stood there and covered the network and still will do that. But you're not going to sabotage my life and my credibility. This is who I am. I've been through a lot of things. And coming out of all of that, I feel like I'm in a, in a counseling session right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've been through a lot of things in life. And one thing I got, and I got it right, is that I'm now honest. And it mm. took, it took, it took years to get me to this place. Mm. I'm honest. And I am not going to lease that out. You can't buy that from me. You can't, yeah. you can't play with my honesty. You can't play with my heart. And so that network, that network carries God's name, the word. And I'm just asking them to live up to it. Oh. Period. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to ask Bishop George Bloomer and Bishop Bernard Jordan to come back. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I am not uh, coming <laughs> back. Don't you say that. Oh, wait. To be continued. <laughs> Listen, we're in an age now that we're moving towards 2020. And we're going to begin to look at the polarization of the nation prophesying now. It will only take one religious leader and it's about to happen to make the wrong statement and they're gonna create a new kind of civil war mm -hmm. in America. Because if, because Bishop Bloom is being kind tonight. He's, he's being very kind tonight. And that's the way, when, when you've been on the plantation, you be kind. Because I, I have a paper here called the Slave Creed. There was a creed that been programmed in our system to, to walk in so much love that we are blind to even when they make racist statement or things that are being said, we're praying for them. But what is happening in the church today, the church is going to have to deal with America's original sin. And America's original sin is racism. Slavery. Racism. And until that is addressed, you got to think about it. You have people that burned, hung people in trees and then put crosses in their yard and hid behind the church, mm. and the church is silent. The church cannot even speak concerning police brutality. Mm. We watch Kaepernick, who could not get a job for just taking a knee, and it was an opportunity for the church to take a knee. And they've been silent again. And they're gonna be silent on this, and silent on that, until the pot tilts. But it's about to tilt because 2020 is on its way. I promise you, I told you, Larry, the truth. I didn't come here. I didn't come here out of a vicious heart or what have you. Um, I wouldn't be here had they not come after me after I just, and what I said to them is, I need a break from this. I need a, I, I need a break from this. But I just, I, I, I wanna leave, I gotta catch this plane. I wanna leave again because I'm not trying to tear the, na the, the, the network down. I'm not, I, I, hear, I, I hear a prophet and he, you know, and he's probably will talk to me later on about being the, uh, uh, the uh, house Negro. And because I heard him, you know, the slave, I heard him, I, I hear what he's saying. He, he says, so I punch him in his eye too. <laughs> I hear him. But, but the, the, you got to have a Nat Turner and a Frederick Douglass. You need the balance. There's got to be the balance. <laughs> yeah. But, do balance but we, 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 this, this, that, that, that was enough. And um, 
I, I, I just want to say this. I think that um, and every week when people would call my ministry and say they didn't get their product, I would say to send it out to them, send it out to them, send it out to them, send it out to them. And um, this week we got calls, send it out. And I'm going to send it out until I satisfied. And let's not talk, let's not talk about the individual who sold a seed to my ministry, sent us a form so that they can claim it on their taxes to only find out it never got to my ministry. How, how much was it? $25,000. So you're right, I'm being kind. Leave, <laughs> leave the mouse in the hole. He's being nice. Do not call the mouse out of the hole. Call the mouse out of the hole, please. I want to know. All right, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much. I'm not shaking. You <laughs> insulted me, and you owe me an apology. Wait a minute. I was just playing. Yeah, I love, just, I love it. I love you know, it. you was casting out demons <laughs> through laughter. Yeah, because yeah. people laughed their way through. And, and thank you so much. But Bless you know what? You're playing. You're playing is something because they started bombarding me. You scared to go on the show? And I said, No, no, no. Oh, really? I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you invited me. You you called me to the Word Network. Yeah, I did. You know, and I answered. So it was only. I did. I called you the Word Network against all of the people that didn't want you to come. Wow. But I knew that you had the marketplace, mm -hmm. and and you know what? Guess what? what? Thank you, Jesus. All of that was for this. For this. All right, that's it. See you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I ain't coming back. Bye. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs>